Hi guys, and welcome to another video. And as you can see, it is pretty dark. I'm doing my best to get some light in here, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'm gonna get any better than this. And I'm on my new site. So I've been on this site for, this is the, the end of my week now, it's my last night. And it's different because I've gone from 15 hour shifts to 12 hour shifts. So instead of working four days, I'm now working five days, but Instead of getting that extra day off, I've got some more time in between shifts, etc. Um, and some other things that have changed, I don't have facilities here. So literally what I have in the van is is what I've got. Um, what else? There's no, there's no like fence line. There's no sort of gate, etc. So this site is completely different. I'm in a, a very urban uh, area as well. So there's constantly people walking around. There's constantly cars going around, different things. And... Luckily, I know this area very well, so I kind of I kind of understand the area in terms of maybe what should be going on, what shouldn't be going on. Um, I've had a look around. There's like a gym because I've seen lots of people walking in and out of certain areas and there's like a gym that's quite close to me. So it's quite common if I see people walking in and out of a certain direction, I can kind of guess to where they're going, etc. Um, but yeah, as I say, I think this is a really different site compared to my last one. And obviously the different setup is between 12 and 15 hours. So yeah, we are, it's, I think it's coming up to about midnight now. So there's like probably another six hours of this uh, of this shift left to go. And I thought maybe I'll just talk about maybe some of the good points and bad points um, of the changes that have been made. Um, and to start off with, I'll talk about the difference between 12 hours and 15 hours. Now, I've been someone that said, look, if you can get 15 hour shifts, you can only work four nights instead of five. And I think, do I prefer that? I think it's quite an even balance, but what I have preferred uh, since I've been doing the 12 hour shifts is having sort of that hour, hour and a half to um, to kind of, once I get home from work, to to have a drink, speak to the missus before she goes to, goes to work, etc. And just have a bit of a chill out when I get back. Um, and then being able to have a decent sleep. So somewhere between seven to eight hours of sleep, which is quite nice. Um, with the 15 hour shifts, I've been maybe five, five and a half hours has been sort of my max sleep, where now I'm getting sort of seven, between seven and eight. And then even by getting up at seven or eight, I still leave myself maybe like a couple of hours until I need to go to work. So I've been able to, to have some cereal or to be able to spend some time with the dogs to eat before I go to work. Um, because not having facilities here, um, I can... I can bring food with me obviously and because there's no facilities I've got no heating so tonight it's actually going to be down about sort of freezing uh, the grit has been out and about already tonight so it is going to be really cold so the van it actually makes makes its own fridge so all the food that I bring the sandwich and all that that I bring or the couple of cans of coke or whatever that I bring the actual van acts as a fridge which is obviously not great for me and the dog but in terms of sort of food, etc. But I still want to try and get like a decent hot meal or have some decent food before I go. So having that couple of hours where I think for Mazda I got like a, a fake sausage McMuffin um, that you can that you can pick up. So I actually had like one of them before I come to work. So that's like my kind of hot snack for the day. Um, and then I've got like a sandwich that I'll have throughout the night in order to get me back round to when I get home in the morning where I can have like a, a cereal, etc. So. I do, maybe I do prefer the 12 hour shifts because of that little extra time, but I don't know whether that's possibly because of my setup. Now, if you said to me tomorrow, like you're going back to 15 hours, there's full facilities, you can cook yourself a paella in the microwave there, um, and it's reasonably close, then would I take that? I don't think I'll be, I don't think I'll be disappointed in, in doing that again, um, regarding that it is reason, reasonably close. I am close to, to, to where I live now so it's not as if I'm wasting a lot of my day or a lot of my rest time in terms of travel so I think this is this is to me this is nearly the perfect job because it's in an urban area uh, where you can people watch you can there's certain things going on that can kind of pass the time it's it's clean I love that it's clean so the dog's not getting dirty my boots aren't getting dirty I'm not getting dirty so it's a really clean site um, like I say, urban urban area, and it's very close to home, so I'm not wasting sort of loads of time travelling to and from work, which I think 
if you're doing 15 hour shifts with an hour's worth of travel each way then you all of a sudden you're out of the house for like 17 hours where at the moment i'm at i'm out of the house for a maximum of like 13 hours so i think it is uh i think so far i've preferred it i feel more rested i feel more rested than i did with the 15 hour shifts uh but as for now we'll uh continue doing our shift we'll take you on a bit of a patrol in terms of what obviously there's only so much i can show you but because of the because of how dark it is here there's obviously only so much that you'll be able to see as well so you'll probably see more silhouettes than you will anything else but yeah we'll continue the shift and maybe i'll check back in with the differences uh in a little bit Now on the face of it, this is uh, this isn't the hardest job in the world you're ever going to do. I think their main concern is the car park being used um, as sort of a hangout place, stroke racing, stroke doing donuts, showing off, etc. Um, in an area where there are flats and all that quite close to it. So most of the job is just to look after, make sure that the car park isn't being used for that sort of stuff, and looking after the building sort of comes secondary to comes secondary to that. Um, so on the face of it, it's a reasonably, it's a reasonably straightforward job. Um, I think one of the big differences between this site and my last site is that there's no boundary. Now you do have to walk off the public footpath in order to walk onto site, uh, but that's easily done. Like you can just you could walk through it, you can walk through a little to try and cut some off. Um, so it's easily done, um, but obviously. You just have to be your authority on that and say, look, you can't you can't use this as a cut through or you realise that this is uh, private land. This is not the public. The public land is the footpath, etc. But when it comes to patrolling the dog, etc, is that you have to be a little bit more wary because there is no fence between you and the public. You obviously have to be a bit more wary in the way that your dog comes over. Maybe your dog doesn't patrol certain parts of the site um where you're going to be reasonably close to the public um this time of night when it's like midnight and through all this week sort of after maybe like half 10 11 o'clock um most most places most people are, are in bed or doing whatever so i'll say from sort of half 10 ish this place goes pretty dead so i can patrol the dog um in them areas but what i do do what i do do what i do is i patrol him on a slip chain in certain areas so there are certain areas where i'll patrol him on a slip and there'll be certain areas where i'll patrol him on a flat and give him a bit more lead etc so i think you just have to be careful of the of the public's sort of view on it because there's no fence between you and them there is a chance that they will feel threatened a lot easier or a lot quicker than let's say my last site where there was harris fencing in between us but i think understanding that it's it's easy to walk onto this site in terms of using it as a cut through it's not a case of jumping over a fence or whatever it is it's very easily done so i think you also just have to be more explanatory rather than telling off or rather than challenging people in order to, in order for them coming onto your site i think you just have to be more explanatory about it but i think the, the key thing is the difference between this and that this site and my last site is understanding that there is no fence between you and the dog and people can feel threatened and making sure that you do keep your distance and if you are going to patrol the dog in certain areas that sometimes it has to be done on a slip rather than a flat or the dog doesn't even need to come at all like i think there's there's certain parts of this site that are quite cl up and up close and personal to the public footpath where the dog doesn't even need to come like the dog doesn't need to go and patrol them bits i can patrol them bits on my own and maybe i just take him to the to the areas where there's not going to be someone walking five yards away from us or there's not someone that's going to be 
walking around the corner on us. So I think understanding that there are certain parts from which the dog doesn't need to come with me to do patrols. Um, or if I am going to, then making sure that he's on a slip, etc. And understanding the downtimes and the busy times, like between six and half ten, I know that this place is going to be reasonably busy. There's going to be people walking right on the perimeter of the site. So I need to understand that maybe sometimes I don't need to take the dog out during them times. But once everything goes dead around half 10, 11, then, then they're the times that I can get the dog out. So I think it's quite inter interesting to, to see the two sides of it. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's something that you have to look out for as well. Right, well, we are coming up near the end of the shift now. There's some sort of on-site industrial security that, I don't know if they're SIA, but they've got a cushy little job. They drive around in their little security vehicle. And just a minute ago, I was out doing a patrol and he come absolutely tearing up behind me. And uh, I went, carried on doing my patrol and he kind of stopped as if to as if he was checking me out i mean i don't know i've been here all week and i had the dog out so uh and now he's sat across the road and i'm not sure if he's just like checking me out or what he's doing but uh i think one of the biggest things like the biggest differences on this site is that uh obviously i don't have facilities here and like having the facilities to do hot food or or any of that kind of stuff that's like the biggest difference with this site and i'd say being able to to eat before i come to work i've actually i've actually not really felt it that much like having sandwiches and that for for food etc has has been has, has still been okay to be fair so i haven't really felt the difference obviously the uh the heating like i still think this would be my perfect site a clean site with a large car park where i can get out do some stuff with a dog there's grass areas where I can take him for him to have a little sniff around and like trees for him to toilet and all that sort of stuff. Um, if it had a plug socket, I think I would be, this would be my perfect site. I think that's the only thing that's missing is a plug socket. Other than that, really like this site. Um, so I'm happy that I am here. I think there's the two differences in between the sites is that Obviously, the site I was on before, I was dealing with the client. So in terms of like prestige, I'm I'm probably giving out my best um, relationship with like a client where this site where I'm swapping with uh, other handlers and that I feel like I'm just I'm benefiting security dog handling as an industry on the outlook from the public. I mean, obviously, I work at night and things like that, but I think I give a good representation of security dog handling to the public. Where, like my old site, I'm probably giving a good representation of prestige to to the client. So I think they're two very different types of jobs. And like I say, I've, either or works for me. Um, depend as long as they're as long as they're reasonably local. But um, I think, give me a plug socket on this site, this would be my absolute ideal site. Um, mainly due to uh, location, but it being clean, it having a big car park, me having the opportunity to do stuff, but also being able to, to benefit security dog handling in the way in which public perceive me, etc. So that is my new site. That is my thoughts on it. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below for loads more videos. Uh, next month, March 2023, all my videos are going to be Patreon on the Patreon. There's nothing, there's not going to be any videos uploaded onto YouTube every Saturday. They're going to be on Patreon. I'm doing a Patreon only month. So if you want to go down the link below, uh, in the description below, there'll be a link to my Patreon. If you want to sign up, look, it costs three pound a month or from three pound a month. It really helps me out in order to carry on doing what I'm doing, etc. Um, so yeah, for the next month, March 2023, all my videos or all my weekly videos are going to be on Patreon. If you're interested, go down in the description below. 
and uh, there's a link there if not then i'll see you in april cheers for watching see you later bye